Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you a quick, effective way to give your color photos a powerful artistic quality to them by targeting the red, green, and blue channels individually and applying various blend modes all through one overlooked feature called Apply Image. Open a color photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The first step is to make a copy of our image by pressing Ctrl or Command J so we can always have the original intact. Go to Image and apply Image. Before we go over this feature, be aware that it doesn't work on smart objects so we can't automatically apply the effect to a different photo. Basically, Apply Image combines the red, green, or blue channels with various blend modes and layer masks. In the window, there's the source and the target. The source is the image we're using to affect the target image. Open the layer list, which lists all the layers in our layers panel. To use all layers in the source image, select Merged. In this case, the layer we'll be using is layer 1, which is the copy of the original photo we made a minute ago. Right now, we'll use the same woman subject image to be the target. In the channels list, you can choose to use the red, green, or blue channel as the source. This means it will use only the parts of your image that has red, green, or blue in it. By targeting different blend modes to that channel color, it creates a dynamic range of subtle to dramatic shifts in color. You can easily scroll through the blend modes by pressing the down arrow on your keyboard. To save time, I won't go through all of them, but you get the idea. I like the look of the darkened blend mode in the blue channel. If we want to gradually bring back the original target image, drag the opacity scrubby slider across. If you want to apply the blending through a mask, check Mask. Then, choose the image and layer containing the mask. For the channel, you can choose any color, including gray, to use as the mask. It's worthy to note that you can also use a mask based on an act of selection you make, which is transparency. Select Invert to reverse the masked and unmasked areas of the channel. I'll uncheck Mask for now and change the source's channel to green to see how that combination looks. Next, I'll show you how to bring back small areas of the original photo. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the active layer. To zoom into your document, press Z on your keyboard to open your zoom tool and drag it over the area you want to zoom into. To reposition it on your screen, press and hold the space bar as you drag the image. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft, round brush. I'll make its size relatively small, but we'll adjust the amount further in a moment. The hardness is 0%, and the opacity and flow are both 100%. To make your brush bigger or smaller, press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over the areas you'd like to bring back from the original photo. If you go outside those areas, Press X to invert your foreground and background colors, so white is your foreground color, and brush over those unwanted areas. Then press X again to revert the colors, so black is your foreground color. To fit your document onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command-0. If you'd like to reduce the opacity of the colors you reveal back through the layer mask, go to your Properties panel. If you don't see the panel, go to Window and Properties. Drag the density to the left to make your layer mask more transparent, thereby revealing less of the original colors. Lastly, I'll show you how to blend in a second picture within the Apply Image command. Make the top layer active. Open a picture that you'd like to blend in. It's imperative that it must be the same size and resolution of your other picture, otherwise it won't work. To check its size and resolution, go to Image and Image Size. This image's width is 2800 pixels, its height is 1869 pixels, and its resolution is 150 pixels per inch. To make sure it's the same size and resolution of my first document, I'll open it back up, 
and go to Image and Image Size. Notice its width, height, and resolution are exactly the same as the second picture. If your second picture isn't the same, you can always resize or crop it. Before we blend in the second picture, we should make a composite snapshot of our visible image so we always have a copy of it. To do this, press alt Control shift e on Windows or option command shift e on a Mac. Go to Image and apply Image. We want the source effect to be coming from that second image and the target of the effect to be our subject. Since each photo has its own unique characteristics, I encourage you to have fun experimenting by combining each color channel with different blend modes, different opacities, and different masks until you have just the right combination you like. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.